Greetings, this is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. We're going to now have a look at adding the data validation to our project management system. We've got all the formulas in here. We haven't copied them down yet, but all the formulas are in. Very easy to copy them down in the future. Before we do that though, we've got to get the data validation in. So this tutorial is going to be about some dynamic named ranges, five dynamic named ranges, and then adding that those dynamic named ranges to our Gantt chart, our Gantt chart on steroids. You remember we've been able to download this template from the website, which has an interface sheet here that we'll be working on in the future, it has our strategic plan that we're working on here now. We put the formulas in, let's get going with putting in the data validation. First thing to do is to go to the website, onlinepclearning.com, and then choose the tutorial Excel project manager Gantt chart on steroids and pop down and we'll go to page three, data validation. That's where we need to be. Page three, data validation. Very easy to do this because I've set it out step by step. All right, the first thing we need to do is we're gonna add some data validations for our team member and for our list of progress and then for duration. I'll show you how to do one and then we'll, I'll show you how to copy them over from the website as well. Right now, these three dynamic named ranges are on our interface sheet. So let's pop over to the interface sheet. Here they are here. We want a dynamic named range for our team members, for our progress list, and for duration. Now, if you're not familiar with how dynamic named ranges work, they simply work as an offset formula from here, doing a count, and then establishing the range. I'll do the first one for you, and then I'll show you how to copy the other two over. So let's set up our dynamic named range. We'll unhide our ribbon up here and show tabs and commands, all right? We'll go to the formula bar because dynamic named ranges are formulas. So we we'll click on the formula bar and we're going to choose name manager. We can just click in there and here we have our name manager comes up. Got two names in here that are or static named ranges that are in here. We're going to add a new one. The new one is going to be called team, T-E-A-M. All right, and this is how it's constructed. I'll get rid of the formula here and I'm going to widen this out because dynamic named ranges are a little bit longer than, okay, here we go. So it's the offset function and then an open argument bracket. Now, click on the first cell. That's it there. Here's our first cell where the word Trevor is. Then it's going to ask us, do we want to offset any rows or columns? And we're going to go no rows, no columns. So three commas, and then we're going to count, C-O-U-N-T-A, because it's text. If it was numbers, it would just simply be count. And where do we want to go? Well, we're going to give this a range. A lot of people just go in there and say SS. In other words, use the whole, use the whole column. But you know, you get some inaccurate results with that. I'd recommend that you click into here and give it a fair number. Like, say for instance, you think you won't be using any more than that. So go all the way down there. That goes down to 35. You're probably not going to have more than 25 team members uh, on your project, are you? Now, once you've done that, go back in, put in your closing argument, and then another, and click OK. Here's our dynamic named range set up for us. We clicked on team. Let's check it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just what we wanted to see. All right. So that's how you put in a dynamic named range. We'll close out of that. Now what we're going to do, I'll show you how to copy one from the website. So we're going to go new for our named range. Let's go over to the website and copy one over. I'll show you how you would do that. So here's our next named range, it's called progress. Let's grab hold of it here at the website. It's good practice to copy them in. We'll copy them over. We'll just minimize the website here. We'll go in here and just right on top of that, right click and paste. And there your dynamic named range is in. Remember we said this was called progress. So we type the word progress in here. And your dynamic named range is set up. Click OK. Let's check that. Go to the name manager now. Click on project. Click down here to see if it's going to reference it. Beautiful. Just what we want. Picking up exactly that. Let's do the same now for duration. Now I've put duration in and I've checked it. But look, I just wanted to show you this because it's a nice point to learn. I'll pull this down here a little bit so we can get the, uh, the screen to have a look at it. 
Now, I've referenced the whole column here. Remember I said don't do that, it's probably, you can do it, and it's often done, and really it, off, it probably doesn't matter at all. But if you were to reference, you notice we picked up an extra cell because we're referencing everything and we've got data here. You're confusing Excel a little bit. What you really need to do here is reference a specific range. So we'll just highlight that out and then we'll put in a range all the way, say, down to here, the same as before, down to there. Click OK. And now we'll have a look at duration. We'll save our changes. This time, now you notice we're picking up beautifully accurate material. Now, this is really important if you're using dynamic named ranges to copy and paste data and so on. Very, very important. Okay, so we've got those three dynamic named ranges in. Let's have a look at the next two that we need to add. Remember I said there's five named ranges in this workbook or tutorial, and uh, they're all dynamic. So here are the other two. It's for key elements and for sub elements. The key elements are all the main or components of your project. These are the, the, the pillars of your project. Some people use that term, the pillars, components, um, key framework, whatever you want to call them. And all of these are the breakdown of each of those. So you need to have a dynamic named range. These will be changing and you'd need to change this for every project. So set up a dynamic named range for here and for here. You can copy that over from the website as well. So there's our named range in, copied from the website, dropped straight into the name box, given the name duration, I'm sorry, elements, and here it is picking it up just nicely for us. And we'll do the next one now. So we'll go OK, and we're going to add another new one. And so now here is our last dynamic named range, sub-elements and it's picking that up as well. So now that we have those dynamic named ranges in, we're going to go back over to the strategic plan and drop them into some data validation. Very simple, I'll show you how to do it. And that's all we're going to do in this tutorial, it's going to be nice and quick and easy. So we're going to close up here, back to the strategic plan. Our first is we go up here to where I've put the data validation drop down box in, it's empty, so just click in the cell there, then go up to data, choose validation over here, data validation, and we want to choose list, and it would be equal to elements. List equal to elements. Now, how do we get elements? I'll take that out, we'll delete it out, and I'll show you. Hit the F3 key, and elements is going to, all the, the names are going to come up, all right? So we would choose elements, and click OK. Now, I've also put some messages in here. Error message. And, and you can put the error message in that you want. Make sure you put something in here and then one over there. So you can add those messages to suit your needs. Okay, make sure you put them in. Very important when you're doing a project that you give people as, me, as much help as you can with these little keys. Okay, so we'll go okay. Now that will or should put in a list of all our elements. Here they all are. So we'd put our first one into here. Now into our next, into there, we want to put in a sub-element or all our sub-elements. So what's the way to do that? Data validation, again, data validation. We would choose list once again. We'll take that out and we will hit the F3 key and choose sub-elements. There it is there, okay. Again, don't forget to have an input message. So when they scroll over the cell, you're telling them what to do and an error message that tells them why you're forbidding them to do certain things. So now here's all of the various sub-elements that can go into here. Okay, then we'll put our first one back in. Now, so we would do the same for our duration. Here's our duration. Make sure you put your data validation in for your duration. And for all your team members, just put it here in the first cell. We'll copy them over later. So we've got our one, two, three, four, and there was one more which would make five. Now, in our previous tutorial, I showed you how to put a formula in here that will always indicate in progress completed or not started. Many, and for some projects, you might want to override that, take out the formula and drop in some data validation in here that would allow you to manually put in in progress not started and completed. And that's why I put that dynamic named range in there. For me and for this tutorial, we're going to do it with a formula. 
and I think that's nice. But in real life, you might want to have more control, so you drop your data validation into here and do it from data validation rather than from the formula. One more piece of data validation that needs to go in. It's in this cell here, all right? There's a date notice in here. So let's go in and have a look at what it is. It is a different type of data validation. It is not a data validation from a list. It's a data validation from a date. So choose settings, and then you would choose date, and then between. And all we need to say is always make sure that this is a date between I3, which is our start date, and I4, which is our end date in here. And click OK. Okay, I'd lost those formulas in there. I've just put them back in. So let's have a look at that data validation again, just so we've got it. It's in here. We want to put it into cell G11, and we're going to data, data validation. Here it is here. It's a date between I3 and I4, which is between our start and finish date. That will stop anybody putting in a date that is outside of the project range. So that's very important. You don't want, you can't start something outside your project range. Now, you, we're going to allow people to run past the end of the project, but certainly we, we won't put in a start date that is past the end. All right, then we put in an input error message here, the date range notice. You must have a date in this range and an error message. Okay. All right, so there it is. So now if we wanted to type in here uh, the 12th of the 1st, 2000, what's going to happen? It's going to say the date's out of the range and it's going to put back our original date. All right. All right, well, we've come a long way along. In our next tutorial, we'll have a look at our conditional formatting. Once the conditional formatting goes in, and we'll put that in for the, the area here, we'll put in conditional formatting. We're going to put in conditional formatting here as well. I'm sorry, over here. And also all through here. When we've done that, we'll just simply copy this down and really our strategic plan is then finished. So this is Trev from Online PC Learning. Thanks very much for listening and for joining me once again. So bye for now.